Um, a more pleasant, light-hearted speech after Sophie's incredible chat. But mine is really about my love of food. I love food. Uh, dinner consisting of roasted scallops with black pudding, a middle course of black cod, followed by a great steak topped with foie gras, a glass of wine and friends is the perfect evening. I love trying new foods, um, and which put me in the strange position in life of being the sixth person in the world to eat lab-grown meat, uh, moments after being the first person in the world to cook lab-grown meat. Um, despite being an advocate of lab-grown meat, though, I still adore eating conventionally grown fish and meat. Uh, but recently, I've kind of started to, to wrestle my conscience about whether this is right or wrong. And I think maybe sometimes it's my vegan friends and their constant churning of self-importance that's ground me down, or even the social media keyboard warriors that often misquote American farming figures and apply them to European farming techniques um, that basically uh, belittles the farmers that I know as friends and how much care and effort uh, they put into farming the land and looking after the animals. Um, but then again, trailing the meat wagon, as I say, as I do the school runs, I, I live by all the farms and watching the animals go off to market kind of makes you feel a little guilty. Uh, and also uh, the idea that potentially that uh, animals destined for the food chain caused a worldwide pandemic, um, you know, can, can cut close to the bone, so to speak, but who knows. But in the very medium we debate this, energy consumption of the internet and social media uses 2% of the world's electricity. Uh, perhaps even the medium in which we might purchase the meat in the future uh, with crypto coins, etc., might use more energy than actually growing uh, the animal and the meat in the future. Um, yet cattle farming is considered an absolute environmental disaster by some. And the expression of what if and imagine when discussing the future of meat is both frustrating and disappointing to myself, in all honesty, almost as much as when I see a chef just unnecessarily destroy a piece of meat uh, when they're cooking it, not giving it the care and attention that the meat uh, and the food product deserves. But often within the meat industry, um, the meat isn't actually essential. Convenience foods, uh, they're lagged with bold flavors and additives, bulking agents, so why not just cook with an alternative protein rather than carelessly waste the animal's life? We don't need to imagine, though, that about the what-ifs or look back and think, if only. The future is here. I've seen it, I've cooked it, and I've tasted it. The potential, though, has yet to be fulfilled. Since the first time I cooked lab-grown meat in 2013 at a cost of 264,000 euros, 140 companies now have participated in producing lab-grown meat. They're perusing the idea of scaling up meat production and they're raising significant funding. Just last year, a billion dollars has now been raised into the cultivated meat market. But more money is gonna be needed if they want to get an, uh, a market share of the meat industry. Um, and despite all of these finances from some of the wealthiest individuals and in some cases state-backed, a considerable amount more is still needed. But with an ever-expanding population, by 2050, production of the world's meat needs to double because currently we consume 300 million tons of meat presently um, around the world. So far, Singapore has given uh, approval for the use and the, the consumption of um, farmed meats or conventionally uh, cell-cultivated meats. Uh, and it's hoped that later this year, the FDA in America, uh, the food uh, and Drug Administration will support it and allow uh, conventionally grown meats to sit alongside stem cell meat and be sold and consumed by the general public. But having personally cooked this back in 2013, I'm still surprised at where we are. Uh, and the debate awaiting for administrative approvals is just, for me, frustrating. I was informed about, when I was about to step up on stage back in 2013, that a billion people would read talk, listen, hear, watch about the burger and what we were cooking in London. I was also told not to fuck it up. <laughs> so, when cooking and eating the proof of concept beef burger, not only did it taste perfectly normal, but what really appealed to me from a kitchen perspective was that we could control the amount of fat that we could put into the product. 
So therefore, the ability to cook healthier dishes, to tackle world obesity, was simply a simple choice of deciding not to add in fat, the concept alone giving lab-grown meat an advantage over traditionally reared animals in creating a balanced diet. I'm frequently asked, obviously, about the taste of the burger and quite commonly about the cost. It's a lot of money. But what's really memorable, that the burger tasted like a top side of beef, typically a very lean, a very subtle cut of meat. The only negative in the taste, in my opinion, was that there was a residual salt that, in my opinion, came from the growth serum in which the lab-grown meat was produced. But after tasting it, I genuinely believe that more meats would be in production in the following few years. Once approval is given, financial stakes have been raised so high that in vitro meat becomes the equivalent of NFTs or cryptocurrencies of the food production world, creating vast wealth for the early pioneers. In the music industry, where downloadable music sales obliterated CD sales as it adapted to a new form of medium, vinyls became cherished and far greatly appreciated. As their value rose, perhaps society will appreciate farmers for their contribution in the same context and will be willing to pay more for their conventionally grown produce. If more widespread approval was given, this could change significantly how and what we could cook, both as a chef and as a home cook. With the success and cost-effective growth of new proteins, it opens the doorways for chefs to request their dream food product, from scallops the size of a brick to marble beef 3D printed in your very own home, ready for cooking. Technological advances in the kitchen have changed in living memory for some. For example, the microwave. It was invented in the 1940s, um, and initially it was sold in the mid-50s, but it was far too expensive. In the mid-60s, the costs came down, and by the mid-70s, a million microwaves were being sold per year. This is just an example of something in, in short-term memory. The idea that we grow our own meat from starter cells in our own kitchen could be a realization if we consider the microwave concept. Better still, we can grow almost anything we can imagine, and that's exciting. I've already created a wish list of meat products I would like to see in my kitchens, which became the foundation of the Bistro in Vitro um, uh, virtual restaurant. These include friendly foie gras, avoiding the controversial meat technique altogether, and an abundance of blue caviar without the need for sturgeon farms and at a lower cost point. If lab-grown meat is successful, it will give chefs not only a chance to reinvent the wheel, but supersize it, like the idea of a scallop the size of a brick. Society, from our recent surveys, appears more willing to try lab-grown meats, with one-third of the general public now willing to try it. That's the equivalent of this part of the room. But I expect over the 12 next 12 months, more of us will have had the opportunity to try lab-grown meat due to the production increases and the claims of the cost of production have been significantly reduced. We don't need a quarter of a million to try it anymore. Um, but I've been wrong before in my forecasts. Despite my previous timeline predictions, I would like to think that when we're, ha when we're having this conversation again in 2024, many of you will have tried lab-grown meat. Ultimately, I wouldn't really be happy eating an intensively farmed crushed avocado from the once luscious regions of the Amazon, but that's a whole different problem with the food industry at the moment, so we need to look at alternative methods. Luckily for myself, our top scientists are looking at how to reinvent the wheel. However, it is consumer purchasing that will get the wheels turning for a more environmentally sustainable future. The future of lab-grown meat will ultimately be judged on taste and cost, as well as its environmental impacts on the planet by its early adopters. So let's see what science can bring in these next couple of years for society. It can only be asked that people are willing to try new things, because at this rate, the planet is going to need us to try new things with the way we produce food. Thank you. <laughs>